Hello, today we're going to be talking about transmission options and how important they are behind your Tune 606. There isn't really one transmission that suits all and everybody has a different, but I have my favourites and I'm going to go through some of the options, rough ideas of the costs and why you should choose or why I think you should choose these different options. Right, follow me. Right, well, we're sat next to a TH400, a fully built unit. This is a 900 horsepower capable unit. Um, and this is a kit going out to a customer that's running a high horsepower application. And we have the adapter and everything to suit the 606 for that. So it was getting this transmission kit ready that made me think, let's do a little list. So I've done you a nice, easy to understand list. So, okay, 606 transmission options. These are the best based on my experience my experience so everybody has different experiences yes I have probably experienced quite a lot of different varieties um, but as we all know the internet knows best however I'm going to just tell you my side of events right so I've done a power level between 200 to 600 plus so we've got 200 lasts forever 250 to 300 good for off-road 400 great for drift because the spool up time is good 500 fast road, obviously not as good for drift, we're starting to lose spool up time there. 600 plus, no good at all for drifting uh, or anything where you want fast spool, but awesome for fast road and drag. So the, manu the, the uh, transmission options, we've got manual and auto. So for under 200 horse, stock manual, if it's a, a Mercedes model, is going to be fine and a stock auto if it's a Mercedes model is going to be fine as well. So I've put 72.3, 4 and 6 there. Um, 250 to 300 horsepower, my good for off-roading sort of section. That's becoming a really spiky sort of turbo setup, plenty of low down performance. So I've put for manuals, you know, you're good with quite a lot of standard transmissions like the Land Rover R380, things like that. They can be upgraded to take that power. Uh, Um, the smaller patrol gearbox, like the 2.8, um, and a few of the Mercedes manuals as well, the six speeds, not the early five speeds, they won't take. <laughs> auto, if we're going Mercedes auto, stock 722.3, like you'd find in the petrol six-cylinder cars, that'll be okay, and the six, the 722.6, that will be okay. But if it's in a conversion, remember the 722.6 will need a controller, and that is when they become unreliable and they're a headache, so we don't use them. 400 horsepower, we're moving up. So we're getting out of the realm of most standard transmissions in most standard cars. Um, so we're fitting the heavy duty BMW boxes like the 53BZ and the 53DZ, so adapter kits for those. See like an old Audi Quattro, which is nice. The back tyres are made of plastic, pure plastic. <laughs> it goes really well for five cylinder. Yeah. And the gearbox works beautifully. CD009, which is a Nissan 350Z, again adapter kit. 37DZ, um, which is the smaller BMW ZF, which is real strong. Um, and the 3 litre and 4.2 Nissan Patrol transmissions will take that kind of power. They're really strong, um, which is nice for, for, for like, that's the only stock application. The others obviously be a conversion. So if you've got a 124, you're going to use a 37DZ because it's small, it'll fit. <laughs> Does it do burnouts? Yes. Show us, please, Mr. Luke. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> so if you want to go auto, it's a bit of a grey area for the auto. The big, auto, the big American autos are a bit overkill for 400, even though they're absolutely fine for it. And the stock Mercedes stuff is like not up to the job at 400 horsepower. So mildly upgraded smaller autos. Mm, 722.6 will take it stock. But again, loads of problems with that gear, gear controller, the electronic interface. So I'd stay away from those with the mechanical system. Amazing in standard applications, amazing at ECU run applications. You know, the 722.6 was used in um, the SRT8 Grand Cherokees with really good success. And generally when there's some kind of electronic interface that connects with the engine, they work really well. Obviously this, the uh, OM606, we go full mechanical and that's where it goes pear shaped. Controllers just don't seem to work well with it. So, but moving up to 500 horsepower now, bigger manual boxes. So mainly the 53BZ and DZ, uh, BMZFs, really strong. CD009 is still, still from the previous, very strong. T56 Magnum, so a Tremec make a nice range of upgrade transmissions. T56 Magnum is a beast. It's got double overdrive. And uh, personally, if I was gonna do a, you know, pull all the stops kind of, but still H pattern, manual, that's what I'd use. T56 Magnum's awesome box. And you can buy them new from Tremec. Autos, we've moved on to the bigger American stuff. So, uh, well, small TH350, an upgraded version. TH400, you'd probably get away with a standard one, but I would go upgrade anyway and 4L80. Now for all of these, you'll notice I've written manual valve. So uh, you don't really want one of these transmissions to be shifting automatically because it doesn't have a boost reference uh, system that can easily be adopted. So if you just have a manual shift position, it prevents any damage to the gearbox. Um, you can learn to drive it really smooth just like you would with anything else. Um, and it gives you full control. You can have that power where you want it. You're gonna want a stall speed of 3,000 to 3,500 for a 500 horsepower 606 single turbo application. Um, and that'll make it really nice and drivable. It'll keep it on boost when you want it. Uh, if you've got trans brake, you know, like this little module on the side, you can lock up the transmission at the lights, put your foot flat to the floor, build up your boost and when that light goes green, bang, you let go of it and psh, your car's off. So that's a nice option for building the boost up at the line. Um, moving on to 600 horsepower, I don't recommend any manuals for that, um, simply because the lag is becoming an issue. You're gonna have up to sort of 4,000 RPM of really not much power at all, and that makes it quite unpleasant to drive with a uh, a manual transmission so I wouldn't advise that whatsoever so go straight to the big American autos again TH400 4L80 always manual valve body um, power glide could also work but not that many gears and we have a fairly limited rev range so your stall speed is going to be three and a half to four thousand for this kind of 600 horsepower application uh, and again quite drivable um, we can supply transmissions with a higher stall and we can also um, provide transmissions with a, a stall blow off so you can actually bleed the pressure to your torque converter you can get that revs up get the boost up and then slowly release that uh, bleed system to engage the torque converter so you can almost like get it right up to the rev range get the boost and then pull it back down So that's what I would go with for the 600. So to summarize, I've got cheapest option. So if you want a really dirt cheap, you know, you're talking a budget build, um, Mercedes 220 CDI six speed is really cheap. Um, and we do a budget clutch kit on our website, which is really cheap for those, like 275. Comes with flywheel, pressure plate, clutch cover, all the other bits and pieces. Um, 
my personal favourite, 4L80. So not this is TH400, but the 4L80 is on the back of mine, and that's because it has a nice overdrive and it's rated for 1600 horsepower. So it's pretty bomb proof. Um, the performance gain from having that 4L80 is unreal. So if I took you out in a 600 horsepower 606 with a manual, don't get me wrong, when that boost kicks, you're gonna think, whoa, this is mega. And you can freight train most things on the road with ease. I mean, fast, fast cars. To give you a, some sort of perception, a friend of mine had an F-Type R Jag, 550 horsepower supercharged. Have a look at them online, quick car. My charger, the old green one, um, I could literally leave him like he was standing um, with us. I think that was sort of 680 was its peak power, but when I was driving it on the road on the wastegate, probably just a touch over 500, 550. So yeah, fast cars. Um, and with that 4L80, it just kept it in its torque band. It really multiplied the torque like you won't believe. Absolutely awesome. So worst gearbox in my personal experience of doing 606s for a long time, 722.6. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons for that. The 722.6 is a fantastic gearbox. Absolutely, no doubt, won't deny it for a second in its factory applications with, well, in its factory applications in good condition. One of the main issues is lots of people shout the benefits of the 722.6. People are buying them or getting them free with 606s that have done two, 300,000 miles. These things are already worn out. They have conductor plate issues anyway. That's a standard failure on a 722.6. So that's something that you're fighting. And the aftermarket controllers they don't gel nicely with a mechanical pump. So the combination of all those things is a problem. And it's a shame because the box, the length of it is good. You can get it into most applications and it's cheap. But the amount of headache that it causes, I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. Um, also, just a little note, what I really like to use as well in builds is anything that's stock. So for example, a Land Rover, if a Land Rover has an R380 in it um, and I can utilize that or upgrade it, I will keep that because there's nothing better than connecting to something that was originally there. The gear shifter's in the original place, uh, all the mounts in the original place. It's really nice to utilize something that's already been laid out for you and you're not having to custom build prop shafts and gearbox mounts and all the rest of it. So anything where you can get away with using a stock transmission, we do a massive range of adapters so that you can, so we can help you do that, whether it's Nissan, Toyota, you know, Chevy, Ford, uh, BMW, there's lots of different versions. If you can use a stock transmission, I completely think it's a great idea if it can hold up to the power. Any questions on any of that sort of stuff, feel free to email us. I hope it's been somewhat helpful. I hope you've taken something away from it. Um, have a nice day. See you later.